the government wants you to use debt. This is something that a lot of people don't understand. We just want to get people to pay less tax and make more money. We're all playing the game. The only question is, you're going to play to win or you're going to play to lose? I'm going to borrow to buy Bitcoin. I'm going, well, there's a dumb idea. Okay, because... Yeah. And there he is. How are yeah. you doing, Tom? A, a baby boomer does it. This is amazing. <laughs> is this your first doing? First time doing a live? It is. It is. I, I, it's a historic moment for this baby boomer. I love it, dude. I love it. Well, thank you for joining us in. Tom's got a new book out called The Win-Win Wealth Strategy. For the YouTube audience, we're going to link it up down below so you can go check it out. And it's basically all about how you can pay as little taxes as possible. Nobody likes paying the tax man. And Tom's got seven amazing strategies to help you pay as few taxes as possible. And most people are afraid of numbers. People are afraid of accountants. They don't, they're not excited to go talk to their accountant. They don't understand half of what those people are saying. Uh, they don't understand their own balance sheet and income statement and all. And what you do a great job, I think, in the book is you make it easy to understand. Yes, there's still numbers. So guys, there are still numbers in there. So, you know, but, but there's lots of pictures. Uh, you show like country by country, what you can do, a little check boxes. So if you're a really visual learner, this is not a really, as soon as I saw a book written by an accountant, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is going to be so dry. But it's, it's great. It's, yeah, it's like so easy to read. So many pictures and checklists. And I love your, he has these stop and think call outs. That's like takes up a third of the page and like, this is what you need to focus on. So anyway, Tom, awesome book. Thank you. Uh, and welcome aboard. Thank you. It's, it's good to be with you. And uh, uh, thanks for those comments. My, my goal in life is to make taxes fun, easy and understandable. So if I can do that in this book, I, I, I love what we did in this book because I think it really is simple. Maybe go like by how much I have. So if I've got, you know, 10,000 in my account or 100,000 or a million or 10 million, like how do, what are the biggest opportunities for people at different stages? So, so the number one uh, opportunity for everybody is to start their own business. That, that is the number one uh, opportunity. I actually run, uh, I, I like running numbers because I'm an accountant, but it does prove things out, right? And what I did was, is I actually said, okay, if you started a business from home, Okay, how much of the cost of starting that business could you get the government to pay for in reducing your taxes on your other income? And it turns out it's over 100%. So the government will literally pay you to start a business. So, and, and you don't have to have any money because you can literally reduce your W-2 taxes, take your, uh, you know, your, 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 um, your W-4, reduce your taxes, use the taxes that you would otherwise have paid to the government to start your business, and then you won't, you shouldn't owe money when you, when you uh, file your tax return because you will have reduced your taxes by more than that amount of money. So it literally, the government literally pays you to start a business. So I, that is the easiest thing to do. It literally takes no money at all. Um, you, I mean, you, you, because you can get it from the government, right? Just reduce your withholding, get it from the government. Or you can say, well, I'm going to pre-fund it. Okay, maybe I've got $5,000. I'll pre-fund this and I'll get my $5,000 back in a refund, you know, whichever way you do it. But that's, the, that's actually the number one. That's the easiest. That's the least expensive. And it has the biggest results. I mean, think about this. Last couple of years, everybody's been working from home. Employees didn't get to deduct their home office and people with a business did. The big shift. And so for people, I mean, my audience are, are mostly entrepreneurs already, or they're wanting to be entrepreneurs. So you're okay. preaching to the, to the converted, but more so from like, I want to start my own thing as opposed to, Hey, this is a great tax strategy. So for people who don't know, is it just a lack of information? Are they talking to the wrong people? Are they just afraid? Like, why do people not know this? Uh, all of the above. I, I, I do think that people think that taxes are what we call a zero sum game in economics, right? So the, if the IRS wins, I have to lose. If I win that and I cheat, then that means the government loses. And that, those are the only alternatives. And that's not really the way the tax law works. Um, there are lots of things like business where the government can win and you can win. Just know that the government will always win. Uh, you know, the one thing we forget sometimes, the government's our partner, whether we like it or not. We don't get to choose that partner right? It's kind of like we don't get to choose our parents, right? But we, and we don't get to choose the government. Um, hopefully, we like our parents better than the government, but we don't get to choose. We don't get to choose being a partner, but we can choose how we're a partner. So we can either choose uh, that, that we're actually active 
partners with the government. In other words, we're doing things the government wants done. And when we do those things, the government gives us incentives, we pay less tax. If we do things the government doesn't want done, like spending money, uh, you know, at the grocery store, government doesn't care if you spend money at the grocery store. There's no tax benefit for that. Um, But if you go out to eat with your business partner, you do get to deduct it. So, I mean, look, the government's just saying, go out to eat with your business partner. Don't stay home and have, you know, uh, grub up. And we'll, we'll give you a tax benefit if you go out, but not if you stay in. What I love about it is you're saying, hey, the, don't make the government the enemy. This is what we have to work with. And let's find the best of, you know, inside of that scenario in the, the bonus chapter without maybe giving away too much. But at the very end, he's got his strategies. And then the bonus chapter is all about Biden versus Trump. And does it matter? And you're like, it doesn't matter. You just have to make sure you're picking what they care about to get the tax incentive. So, you know, going forward, Biden maybe goes through election, maybe doesn't. Trump maybe comes back, maybe doesn't. What are the best things now? And then if if Biden doesn't get in and let's say Trump comes back or DeSantos come, you know, somebody else comes in, how might our tax strategy shift? Well, so think about what happened in 2017, right? Uh, surprise, surprise. We got big real estate tax benefits. I don't know who was president. Oh, a real estate developer. Okay, not surprising, right? We got real, real estate tax developments. What's the big push right now? Big push right now is renewable energy. Well, lo and behold, they're huge renewable energy tax benefits. So there's always going to be tax benefits. The government will always incentivize things that they want you to do. Okay, they want you to buy an electric car. You get a $7,500 tax credit. If you buy a gas-powered car, you get no tax credit. I mean, that's a very simple example of it, right? The same is true in investing, though. So remember that when you invest if you invest the way the government wants you to invest, you never have to pay tax at all. So, um, you know, you might make $100,000 from your W-2 job or from your business. If you reinvest that money into your business, real estate, energy, one of these seven investments, you don't have to pay tax on that $100,000. It's not just that you won't pay tax on your investment money. It's that you won't pay tax on the money that you put into the investment in the first place. Where are you on buy, borrow, die? Well, in my first book, Tax-Free Wealth, I actually go through a whole example of it, okay? So I actually, there's a whole uh, whole chapter on buy, borrow, die in my first, first book, which is really basically you buy an investment, you borrow out any money that you need over the years, and then you die and the tax goes away. And it's, it's actually a fairly simple strategy. You just have to remember that debt's not taxable. So I actually talk about debt in chapter four of Win-Win Wealth Strategy. The government wants you to use debt. This is something that a lot of people don't understand. Debt is money and money is debt. So the government wants you to borrow money. And, you know, right now they're raising the interest rates to slow down how much you're borrowing, but they still want you to borrow money. And it, because when you borrow money, that's new money into the economy because the bank doesn't lend their depositors money. They lend new money. This is brand new money. And because the money's still in the bank, right? So they can't lend out your money. So they're actually lending new money. Well, the government wants you to do that. So the government gives you tax benefits. One of the biggest tax benefits for debt is when when you borrow that money, you don't have to pay tax on it. And so why, why not borrow? I mean, when you die, you know, you, you, it, your, your, your kids can pay it off when they sell your, your real estate or they sell your business, they can pay off the debt and they're not going to pay tax when you die because taxes go away when you die. And, and when I first discovered that concept, I was blown away. It's like, why do, how do all these rich entrepreneurs make no money but then buy all these things? Yeah. Because they're just taking out a loan. They have no income tax, usually, right. sometimes, but it's really small. They just take out right. loans against the value right. of their shares. And the, the money they make from the loans are not taxable. So they're not paying the government any tax on it. And they can go buy whatever they want. Yeah, sure. I mean, they're, they're, they're getting, uh, you know, they do. They put their shares up as collateral or, or you, you use life insurance. Life, I actually do a whole chapter on insurance because you can actually use life insurance the same way. You can borrow. Um, you can use your life insurance as collateral. You don't pay tax on that borrowing. Actually, and if you take that money from your life insurance and you invest it, you actually get to deduct the interest as well. So you get like multiple tax benefits here um, just by, you know, understanding the rules of of the game that, by the way, we're all playing the game. The only question is, you're going to play to win or you're going to play to lose? People are so afraid of debt. We've been taught that debt is bad. Our parents probably told us that don't do it and credit cards are ripping us off. 
So tell us, how do we rewire our mindset around debt so it empowers us? I have a really simple um, way to do that. Um, the only reason you should have debt is to buy an asset, right? That's the reason for debt. The, the purpose of debt is to buy an asset. If you don't trust, if, you, if you're afraid of the debts because you don't trust the asset, if you're afraid of the debts because you don't trust the asset. People who trust the asset, I mean, you, you look at um, like real estate developers, they have billions of dollars of debt. Well, how can they get comfortable with billions of dollars of debt? Well, simply because they know that the tenants are going to pay for the debt. So they don't have to worry about it. The tenants are going to pay for it. And they're not, they know that they know how to keep tenants and they're not, they know how to do their job, right? They know how to get that, that asset to continue to work. I, it's like me, I, you know, do, would I ever worry about borrowing? If I, if I want to borrow to expand my CPA firm, would I need to worry about? No, because I know my CPA firm's always going to make money. It's made money for 30 years. It's not going to stop making money, right? So I trust that asset, right? I trust my business to produce the income. So it's okay if I, you know, if I need to borrow in order to expand that business, if I need to borrow to reinvest, I'm okay with that because I trust the asset. But if I don't trust the asset, let's say I get, let me, for example, let, let's say that you're going, well, I'm going to borrow to buy Bitcoin. I'm going, well, there's a dumb idea. Okay. Because you should never trust that asset because there's nothing there to trust. Right. I mean, there's no there there. That's the, the challenge with Bitcoin. Now it may go up. It may go down. We don't know, but you have no control over it. So what you want is you want an asset that you can control. If you can control the asset, then you don't have to worry about the debt. Well, I think also when people are thinking about a credit card, they're not buying assets at all. They're buying right. shoes and clothes. Right. And that's bad debt. <laughs> right. So as long as you're using the money to go buy an asset that's going to keep going up, then that, that, and that's how people successfully fund and grow and the ultra wealthy keep growing. Right. But, but look at, I mean, we, we have a really good example of an, an example where somebody's not so comfortable borrowing money because, uh, because their asset went down. This is uh, Elon Musk, right? He's not so comfortable buying Twitter because the stock market came way down and he doesn't have the collateral that he had before in Tesla. And so now he's worried about, okay, do I really want that debt to buy Twitter, right? I think that's my personal opinion. I think that's what's really going on here is he's going, do I really, you know, now that the stock market has come way down, I mean, Tesla is not 2000 anymore. It's 750, right? Now that stock market is coming way down, do I really want that debt? Do I really trust that Twitter? You know, I said originally, I don't care about, I don't care about whether Twitter makes money, but man, maybe I do now, right? So, so it's, not just, it's not just the average person. I mean, rich people have the same problem. You have to make sure this is where, I, I think that was his big mistake, frankly. And I, I'm a big fan of Elon Musk, but I think that was his big mistake because I think he, you know, when he said, I don't care if it makes money. Okay. I think if he were confident that it were going to make money, it was going to make money, it wouldn't have mattered. He, he, I, I think he'd be going through with the deal. I, I don't think this would be an issue. I just think he's not co confident that that asset is going to pay for the liability. So back to your earlier point, if you're going to take a, a debt to loan to buy something that's going to go up that you're confident in, then you do it. Otherwise you don't. Right. Exactly. At, the, at, at the highest level of buying a you know, billion dollar company plus right. or at the lowest level, a hundred right. bucks to buy whatever asset you think is going to go up. I love it. So, you know, that's the, so the advice for the pure somebody at the very beginning is go start a business, right? Yep. There's so many deductions that you can have to start a business. If somebody's already had some success, if they have a hundred thousand, if they have a million dollars, maybe not like Elon Musk level, but they have, they have some money. What's the biggest opportunity that those people are missing out on? I, I choose one or the other. <laughs> so I, I'd actually look at, so whether it's real estate, energy, agriculture, um, technology, I'd be looking at one of the other seven investments and go, okay, which one's interesting to me? Which one what, do I care about? Um, some people care about real estate. Some people say, wow, that would be really interesting to do real estate. Some people go, you know what? I'd really like to go start a, I'd like to do a, a, a winery. I'd like to build, I'd like to have a vineyard, right? So they go do agriculture or somebody else might go, you know what? I want to go get into new technology. So I'm going to go into, in, into that. It doesn't matter. They all have similar tax benefits. Um, they all have great tax benefits. Energy, renewable energy right now, probably the greatest tax benefit out there is renewable energy when you put it on your own business property, 
Okay, that's a terrific tax benefit. Okay, so that what what that means is is I just need to choose. This is why I did a survey, right? This is why there are seven investments. I'm going look. Not everybody likes all seven. I'm never going to have a farm. I'm not a farmer. It's not in me. Okay, <laughs> um, I'm, I'm just not. But. Am I interested in energy? I've always been interested in energy. I'm putting solar right now on my office building. Um, my return on investment, I estimate to be about 22% because the government's paying so much of that upfront cost. So 22% return, I'll take that, right, on something that has literally no risk. It is always going to be sunny in Arizona 300 days a year. We are not worried about that. So we're going to have that return on a consistent basis. I can control that return. So um, I, would, I, I would just pick one. I'd, I'd read the book. I'd read all of the chapters and say, okay, which one's interesting to me? And that's the one I would choose, and that's the one I would learn more about. And is that then a conversation they take to their CPA and say, hey, like, let's go learn about this? Uh, maybe their CPA. I will tell you, their CPA probably doesn't know, know, know how to invest. I mean, very few CPAs actually are investors. That, that's a problem, actually, in my, my profession. Um, I, would, I would go to other educators. You know, if I were in, if I were wanting to learn about multifamily real estate, I'd go to a multifamily real estate educator like a Brad Sumrock, for example, right? Or Ken McElroy. If I were if I were looking at um, a stock investing, I go to you know a, a stock trainer like uh, Stephen Brooks or Andy Tanner or John Carter. You know, one of these guys that's really good trainer on it. I'd go to the I'd go to the specialists. I'd go to the professionals. What you want to go to your CPA with is once you decide I want to do this. Go to your CPA and say, okay, now how do I do this most tax effectively? That's, that's what your CPA is for. Is now how do I put this all together? I decided I want to do real estate or I decided I want to do energy. I decided I want to do agriculture. How do I set this up so that I get all the tax benefits, build the most amount of wealth, and take the least amount of risk? I know Robert Kiyosaki wrote the foreword for your book, which is fantastic, amazing. But what, uh, what do we go to Robert Kiyosaki for? Uh, general education. So, uh, all the rich, so I'm a rich dad advisor and that's Robert's company. Uh, so I advise, uh, the rich dad company. Um, uh, Ken McElroy is the real estate guy. Um, uh, John McGregor is the, uh, stock guy. Uh, Garrett Sutton is the legal guy. So, so there's, there, there are specialists, you know, at the Rich Dad Company. Rich Dad, uh, I, what I go to Rich Dad for, you really want to learn basics of investing. You go play his game, cash flow. That is where you learn the basics of investing. That's how you get comfortable with borrowing money because you practice borrowing, you practice going bankrupt, you practice getting the feeling for, oh, how do I do this? And you practice over and over again, then you go to do it in real life, right? Like you would with a, if you were stock trading, you go paper trade for a year before you actually made an actual trade. Well, why not play a game and practice real estate investing before you actually go do real estate investing? I mean, so that that's really uh, rich dad that that game cash flow. There are cash flow clubs all over the world. They have like thirty five hundred cash flow clubs, and so there's one near you. And I, I think it's a I think it's a fabulous game. It's a it has both an income statement, a balance sheet, and a statement of cash flow, and an auditor. So I love it. This is, it's a great, great game. I played that game 20 years ago and it's still just as relevant. And I remember, I forget how much it cost. And I was like, why is this game so expensive 20 years ago? And then I played it. It's like, ah, now I get it. (laughs) Because there's so many great lessons you take as an entrepreneur to be able to, not even as an entrepreneur, but you know, like that's one of the pushes is, Hey, start your own business. You can, you can save a lot of money doing it. Cool. For, for people watching, obviously go buy the book, YouTube. We're going to link it up down below. It's called the win, win wealth strategy. Go check it out. What, what do you hope is the next single action that people take after they read the book? I would hope that they choose a category uh, something that they really would be interested in doing that the government wants done. And then I would hope they would find a really good CPA to help them set it up. Uh, we, we do have a uh, full disclosure. Uh, I run a network of 60 CPA firms around the country. So this is our business is training CPAs to do this. And uh, if, if you need help, you go to wealthability.com and, and we'll help you. If you want your CPA to get help, we'll help them too. So uh, we don't care. We're, we're just happy to, we just want to, we just want to get people to pay less tax and make more money. That's all. But what's the single most important question people should ask their CPA? A uh, uh, single most important question, I think, is what questions would you like to ask me? 
Ooh. And then if they stumble, then uh, it's the wrong CPA. <laughs> exactly. Because it's like, it's like you go to a doctor, you don't expect to be asking all the questions. You expect the doctor to be asking you all the questions. They've got to do the diagnosis. The same thing with the CPA. CPA needs to be doing the diagnosis. The most important skill set of an advisor is to ask good questions. If they can't ask you good questions, you need a new CPA. I like that. What an answer. Well, guys, the book is called The Win-Win Wealth Strategy. We'll link it up YouTube down in the description. Go check it out. Tom, thank you for the love, the energy, showing up for your first live. And uh, best of luck with the book. Thanks, Evan. Much love. To see my sit-down with Tony Robbins' personal financial advisor, check the video right there next to me. I think you'll love it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there. There's this myth. The market goes up, the market goes down. That's not really true. So how do I know who the person is to help me build my wealth plan for like, how do I identify that person?